Well, since you're all ready, we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you for being here. I was real disappointed this morning because I thought it was going to be cooler. You went outside and it was like, ugh. And I see in the forecast it's going to be in the 90s a week from now. Isn't that horrible? Um, but you came to the right place this morning. So if you're very interested in how do I drive more traffic to my website, to my business, how do I raise awareness, how do I get digital marketing impressions, how do I convert those into leads, into sales, into donations, whatever it may be, you've come to the right place because we're going to talk a lot about this digital marketing sales funnel, how to build one, what does it mean, what's a funnel, this has been in marketing for a long time, try and demystify that and give you some very practical things you can take away. So I'm going to be your humble host for this hour adventure and um, so it's I believe in giving a lot of information rather than just scratching the surface. I want to give people real marketing meat that they can uh, enjoy, digest, take back, and really think about. So that's what this is going to be about. There's a lot of material here. You can either sit back and relax because we can, at the end of this presentation uh, or later on today, we can email you the slides. And it's even being recorded by Daniel over here. So that, because we have a lot of clients all around the United States who want to hear this and want to hear what it's all about. So that's what we're doing for them. So we can share the recording as well, which will be me waving my hands and the slides going past the video and the whole thing. So um, if you need to use the restroom or want to get more coffee, please feel free to do that at any time. So now this is one of my favorite things in the whole world. Any other Cherry fans here? This is a sour cherry tree in my backyard, in bloom, or in full, uh, full cherries, uh, ready for harvest this past spring. So we live in Mount Adams, so my yard is only 20 by 20. And I originally planted, when we built the house, this dwarf sour cherry tree, and it was supposed to grow to be about 15 feet tall, and it's now 25 feet tall. And it takes up the, the whole backyard, there's a canopy, and I can't grow any grass anymore. So, uh, but we love to see it when it's in full blossom in the spring, it's absolutely beautiful. There's bugs buzzing around it, it smells glorious, the whole thing. And in, it, it, it comes into uh, full, um, uh, ready for harvest in, in early June, really. And if we don't get them quick, the birds will get all the cherries. So every year my kids get really excited because is it time to harvest the cherries? Is it time? And we go out there and we set up little ladders and everything and they, for about 30 minutes, they're frenetic and they get all the low hanging fruit. And then they all kind of wander away. Oh, daddy, I need to go inside. I need, I'm going to take this in. And they get distracted when it gets harder to get the fruit in the middle and the upper part of the trees, they all peter out. They just kind of wander away. So I'm usually there for another two, two and a half hours getting like bowls full of cherries and then take them upstairs and even the preparation of pitting, like if you ever had a little pitting, that takes a while. I mean, all usually multiple days of pitting, but we get gallons and gallons of these cherries, make cherry pies, cherry crisps, everything. But it's very hard to get the fruit at the top of the tree. And so I'm using this as an analogy for our businesses. It's, it's easy to go after the low-hanging fruit the, cust the same way we got customers uh, for years. Uh, easy pickings. Are we, as marketing leaders and as businesses, willing to put in the effort to really get the fruit at the upper parts of the tree, to really get to people who wouldn't necessarily know who you are or your brand and what it offers. So what's on the mind of people like you? Well, there was a recent small business uh, survey done by Campaign Monitor, which is a wonderful company, and they make email marketing software and CRM software. And they ranked the biggest marketing challenges for businesses. So here they are, overall customer acquisition, increasing prospects and leads, increasing website traffic, increasing social media, and increasing conversions, the top five most important things to small business. Now this isn't just small businesses like US Digital Partners. 
this is uh, small businesses like 500 million and below. <laughs> These are big businesses, but they're not, you know, Fortune 1000 types. So interesting. Sound familiar? So small businesses rank the most difficult marketing channels. So these are the three mysteries for marketing people like us. They don't understand them and how to capitalize on them. Influencer marketing, this is intended to be a maze to a dead end. And then uh, SEO marketing, and then paid digital media, at online advertising. The three biggest mysteries, they don't understand them, they don't understand how to capitalize, how to deploy, where to put their resources. Interesting, huh? Okay, and then finally, small businesses uh, rank their top marketing goals. So this is a little smaller, harder to see. Top goal, acquiring new customers, wonderful. Retaining current customers, increasing the lifetime value of customers, creating new customer awareness or buzz, uh, building a larger pipeline, Increasing average order size per customer and growing the size of the email marketing list. The biggest marketing challenges from small businesses. So, and this is familiar. This is what we hear from our clients every day. We answer the phone, this is what the challenge is. This is what they're facing. You know, I don't know, we need to improve uh, lead generation. We need to improve search engine optimization. We're not telling our story very well. Uh, our website just isn't generating the business or the sales we need it to be, we, where we need it to be as a company. So, very common. And this is not, this is the same thing in the nonprofit world. We're not getting enough impressions. We're not getting enough traffic. We're not getting enough donations. We're not getting enough volunteers, uh, uh, general awareness, everything. So, how do you turn strangers into customers? So, this is the meat and potatoes. Um, so what, what, are, what are the real challenges that uh, marketing and sales have, have been facing over the years? And you see these in your own life. So people now use more sources of information before buying, right? We all do this. We all grab our phone. We're doing shopping. I was at Dick's Sporting Goods just the other night looking at basketball shoes for my son who had to have some basketball shoes and I was literally pulling them up online, scanning boxes, checking prices, doing a price match on the counter to get those shoes down from 70 bucks to 60 bucks or 52.98 or something like that. Well, it worked, right? And, and we, ha we had done research online before going there and we came around, came, came away with the new shoes and he's ecstatic, but everybody's getting their, uh, their sources of information in different ways. Um, in many industries, people have more options to choose from, right? I mean, look at the beer aisle, right? <laughs> in, in Cincinnati, you know how many, we have eight, over 80 microbreweries in Cincinnati now? Where were we 10 years ago? None. <laughs> One or two, Mount Carmel, maybe that was it. Uh, the yogurt aisle, who would have thought? You know, at Kroger, yogurt would take up that much space. All of the consumer options are through the roof. Um, and then you can't assume the same old marketing channels will provide the customers you need. So mailing lists, uh, print ads, trade shows, sponsorships, referral sources, etc. They may not deliver uh, all the leads that you needed to have in your business. And people have come to rely on that and when it doesn't work it begins to dry up or people begin to shift. It happens slowly over years and then it happens. Your lists don't work anymore. The trade show traffic didn't work anymore. People didn't show up this year. And suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? How do I, how do I find these people? Well this is where the whole concept of a sales funnel came from. So this is just a, an image I randomly grabbed off the internet. But it makes, uh, this is where the analogy comes from. So it's, you know, take a bucket, uh, have some holes in it, throw water in the top, some of it stays, some of it goes out. But we, what we need to realize is it, is it is an effective model for, for this, but we're actually sifting through real people. So don't forget that, that you, ac you actually have to find people to feed into the top 
and you're sifting them down to the bottom of the process. But these are real human beings, and they look a lot like us, right? We do. You might not be the one who's interested in your products or services, but somebody else is. And they're exactly like you are when they're doing their research. So um, for our purposes, we're going to keep the digital marketing sales funnel very simple. Top, middle, bottom. Not all that complicated. Now, when you read out there, <coughs> excuse me, there are tens of thousands of articles on this, especially CRM companies, HubSpot, Salesforce, Marketo, uh, all of those companies, and a billion others, uh, Pipedrive, all write and write and write about um, sales funnels. How do you do them? And some of them, there'll be like 12 stages. It's just ridiculous. Yes, they could get very complex over time, but for our purposes, Let's keep it simple. And I think for digital marketing, you really have to keep it simple or else you're going to get lost and be experimenting in so many things and not really seeing the return on investment. You have to concentrate really one step at a time to, to prove it, see what the results are going to be, and build upon it. So let's define these. So at the top of the sales funnel, you want to increase visibility, awareness, and authority for your brand. That's it. That's all you're doing at this level. Uh, you're just bringing people in. If you get too excited and you're trying to sell up here all of a sudden, you're going to lose people. You're just creating awareness and you have to be patient and let the funnel philosophy work. So that's all you're doing at the top. In the middle, this is where you capture and nurture leads, right? This is where you may get email addresses, you may get people to opt in, they may sign up for free trials, etc. And then at the bottom, you turn leads into customers, donors, fans, etc. So that's really the point of conversion at the bottom of the funnel. So let's take you through the step-by-step -step guide. Time to get serious. So at the top of the funnel, focus on activities that increase your brand visibility and the fact that your company exists. Did you even? They don't know you. They don't even know you exist, right? Never heard of you before. Keep that in mind. Um, people are just getting to know you. Attract as many website visitors as possible with relevant content focused on people who are interested in your industry or products. Always send them to your site. There's a great article written out on a website. Uh, why do I even need a website? Or do I need, need a website anymore? Um, it's, it's wonderful. People still want to go to a website. They still want to understand your products and do their research before they identify themselves. So, okay, if that's our goal, really doing activities, marketing activities, and raising brand vis visibility, what are you going to do then? What would be the activities? Well, at the highest level of the funnel, um, we want to be about generating content, writing blog posts, um, in page content on your website to get picked up on search engine optimization. So at this, fa at, at this stage, you're not writing that content to convert them into a sale. You're writing that content in the hopes that it'll get picked up out there by people who link back to your website. And they could, uh, it could be a search, it could be a link from another, whatever it is, you're generating helpful stuff on your industry and products. You can uh, promote a contest or have a giveaway, something that takes on, people begin to um, find out about it, they share with their friends, and it gives them a reason to come back and sign up. Write con uh, or video content for YouTube. Wonderful, wonderful way of getting out. YouTube is not, for most people, for most companies, it's not a place of instant conversion. It's a place of education, and it's a great one because people will watch videos all day long and get exposed to your brand. Paid search and social media advertising, top of the funnel, trying to feed people in. We'll get into more detail there. Email marketing. At this level, if you have a broad list you know, of people, maybe you bought a list, somebody gave you a list at a trade show or wherever, this is the highest level, the, the, the broadest scattergun approach to email marketing. Uh, testing lists constantly. And then uh, digital PR and news releases. Influencer marketing, too. So at the top of the sales funnel, this is getting in touch with people out there in your industry who have points of view. They write about products and services. 
uh, helping them, offering to uh, give them samples of products or give them some information or share some intellectual capital, things like that. And then they can write good things about your business, your products, other things like that. It takes a while to build those networks. Every one of those people is worth their weight in gold if they're linking back to your website. Uh, and especially for consumer product brands, we've done this for Boogie Wipes and Can Do and other uh, companies like that over the years. You want that fan network. You want to uh, you want to build that and keep those people happy. So how do you measure this, right? We're all business folks here. We do these activities. What are we looking at to make sure our top of the funnel is doing what it needs to do? What do we measure? Well, first, sessions and visits to the website. So at the highest level, just raw visits to the website, right? We're just driving traffic. Is this growing slowly over time? Then traffic channel growth. Okay, this raw traffic, is it coming from organic search, direct search, referral sites, paid advertising, social media, email? Are they growing? You know, slow. If you're buying lists, are you getting more traffic that's coming from email? Or if you're getting more active on social media, is more traffic coming? Uh, if it's not, you need to look at your social media and say, well, what's the call to action? Are we driving people back to the website? Or are we just being social? which is fine, it's a brand impression, but can you lead them back to the site? Which is how you get them into the middle of the funnel. Um, then percent new sessions, net new people. So this is a great stat, it's on the, <coughs> typically on the landing page when you log into Google Analytics. Basically it's how many people who are coming to your website have never been there before. Day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out. So for example, US Digital Partners, we're right about 90% of the people who come to our website every week have never been there before, right? It's, that's the opportunity. They've never heard anything about us. They've never, they may have heard something about it. They've never been there to really understand who we are. So nine out of 10 of those visitors, it's a first impression experience, all right? One is a repeat. That's incredible that we've, I mean, we've been in business for 17 years and 90% every week are net new people. Well, guess what? It's not so revolutionary because about 78%, uh, uh, we work with CVG Airport, I looked theirs up yesterday, 78% of the people week in and week out are new. They've never been to CVGAirport.com. Okay, so again, Yes, everybody in the area has flown through and many people probably in this room have been to that website, but they have an opportunity to meet these people for the first time on their website and serve them information and help them improve their travel experience 78% every week for the first time. So they're looking up flight data, they're finding out where to park because it's been a nightmare. <laughs> they're uh, um, looking at tra uh, travel times and security wait times weather, everything. So interesting. That's a huge opportunity if that's a high percentage for you to think, okay, wonderful. How do we get them there? And once they're there, how do we create that experience? Bounce rate. You want these going down. So that's somebody who hits a page and they don't go anywhere on the site and they leave the site, okay? If that's the case, well, what are you doing? Are you not inviting them to do something more? Are you not giving them something substantial? that they might want to do something more or share some information, you want those bounce rates coming down. Digital advertising, it, uh, you're looking at impressions, click-through rate, and cost per click. So this is, this is the most generic stuff at the highest level. You're not converting yet. So, you know, how many, we were able to get, I'll show you some stats, you know, hundreds of thousands of impressions, you know, some percentage, one, two, three, four percent of those clicking through. Um, that's really, and then what's the cost? How much are we paying for those? Because again, you're, you're feeding people in here, right? It's tar targeted people, not just random folks, but what's the cost of doing that, of getting them in the top of the funnel? And those are the, uh, the highest level metrics. And then finally, on email lists, you're measuring open rates and click-through rates. Again, not conversions, but did this list perform? You know, is it opening at 5% or is it opening at 25%? Are they clicking at 5% or are they clicking at 20%? And that all goes into the strategy of, you know, if you, if you get a 
you know, a 30% uh, open rate and a 5% click-through rate, you're not doing email marketing well. There's something that they're opening it, but they're not taking action. Now, maybe the goal was just informational. I get it. Sometimes we send out those blasts too. But, you know, if 30% are opening it, you want to try and get, you know, something like a 15, 10, 15% click-through rate. Okay, helpful so far? Any questions? All right, well, one of the biggest mistakes marketers make is that they don't align their content marketing efforts with their sales funnel stages. So what this means is that at the top of the sales funnel, you want to create content that's that informational, product, industry, educational. Um, you, you're not really... Uh, you're, you're publishing interesting stuff, right? At the middle of the sales funnel, you're going to write content for people to get to know you. And you're going to share your knowledge and they're going to think, oh yeah, wow, that was really interesting. That was very helpful. Um, I'm very interested in this company. I'm, I don't even know. I've become a fan here. And then at the bottom of the funnel, you're writing content to convert people into customers. Short, impactful, going for the, uh, the lead or the sale. So let me give you some examples. These are all blog posts on the U.S. Digital Partners website. And they're intended to be at the top of the funnel. So we, we literally have, you know, common website design mistakes. And do I still need a website? There's that post I referenced. And WordPress, Gutenberg, what do I need to know? Uh, how to make websites ADA compliant? Do I need an app? Five questions your business should ask. Right? These are all out there hoping to get picked up in SEO land, right, on Google, and hoping to drive traffic to the site. And it works. We do get traffic, and occasionally we get leads that say, oh, I found you, how'd you find us? We found you on the, uh, that SEO article you published, or why is my website slow, right? Job accomplished. You get them in there. Um, another example is, Boogie Wipes, our client. So this is a video that's on YouTube. Uh, top of the funnel, broadly targeted video content. Fake sneeze or cough into the flower. So this is healthy habits, teaching kids how to cough and sneeze. It's just a video out there that has a little kid having fun, blowing the powder everywhere, and then the parents teaching them, this is what happens when you don't sneeze into your elbow you know, or your shirt or something else. This is where all the germs go, ooh, gross. But this is good association with something gross with boogie wipes, which is all what we're about. Just the grosser the better. <laughs> Brand impressions, it's all, all gross. Uh, and that's the, that's the intent. But you can do these short and quick and get them out there. It's not your whole marketing strategy. And sometimes leadership is like, why are we doing this? How's this gonna help us sell more boogie wipes? okay, you need to sit through a sales funnel presentation to understand this is top of the sales funnel activity. This is brand awareness. We want as many video impressions from this as possible. And teachers in the class, their classrooms are going to play this for kids. Like, let me teach you how to sneeze, kids. We're going to show you how to keep germs away from this classroom this year. And this is part of what they use. Okay, also top of the funnel, random advertising, a waste of money. So this is my Facebook uh, feed a couple weeks ago. And here's an ad from Yahoo, uh, learn how to officially start your own business. Do I need that? <laughs> you know, why, why is Yahoo, Yahoo is an absolute waste of space in life. What a dis, <laughs> what? What a disaster that company has become from uh, its glorious days in the 90s. Just terrible. You know, random, way, it's, it's just a total waste of time. You guys see this stuff all the time. You're like, why am I getting this ad? Who's the numb nuts who's serving this up? Um, this is a fantastic ad. So I look on the side and uh, I see, oh my gosh, think the game, basketball, help your child live up to their potential on and off the court. And I'm like, whoa, why is that there? Because I happen to have a 10-year-old and a 14-year-old who play basketball and do basketball camps. Whoever did this, it was fantastic. You know, they found me through the sites I had visited or something, and they used the formulas, and they've served up ads, and they've kept doing it ever since. 
And I went to the website and I looked at dates for Cincinnati and my wife and I are still negotiating whether we can pull this off to send the kids to a three-day camp to do this. And these, these people know what they're doing. Okay, a couple more examples. So another random waste of time. This was uh, Four Bridges Country Club. So beautiful, lush. Who wouldn't want to join? What's the problem? Four Bridges is in, what township is it in? I wrote this down. Uh, oh, it's in Liberty Township. It's 26 miles away from where I live and work in 45202. 26 miles away and they're serving this up. Like I'm gonna drive an hour to go play golf. I don't think so. And then uh, Donald Miller's story brand. So this is, it, they do a great job of advertising, but the problem here is here, you know, I converted f three years ago <laughs> and they're still serving the same ads to me, right? You have to, you have to take people out, you have to measure if, if people have seen you, if they've converted, if they haven't converted, you have to learn to stop and turn that off or else you're just annoying. It's like those, those shoes you looked at you know, last November for Christmas and they're still being served up to you. Especially if you can measure if, if somebody converted, you don't need to serve them up the uh, remarketing advertising anymore. Um, one more I love to make fun of because this came across my Instagram feed. I don't know if anybody else got these, but here's Yale School of Managing putting on a digital marketing, a strategic perspective, eight weeks online. What does Yale know about digital marketing, right? Hopefully you're going to learn more in this hour presentation than you will in that whole eight weeks. But again, it's kind of a, it's kind of a joke. They're, you know, they're out there prospecting and doing these things. Um, I think uh, a, waste of, a waste of money, the right idea, the wrong execution. Okay, any questions? All right, we're moving on. We're in the middle of the sales funnel here. And at the middle of the funnel, focus on converting as many visitors as possible into leads. They probably are not ready to buy, even though we want them to really bad. So give away your knowledge and build trust. Again, you have, this is where you hold back. Yes, some people might just sail right through the funnel and convert like that. But you have to assume they're still not ready. And this is where you give away your knowledge. You've brought them in, they've hit the website, all right? So how do, what are the activities for something like this look like, all right? So the, um, you know, offering free PDF downloads on your website, a how-to manual, a five things you should know, five things you should avoid kind of content. Um, this, this works for, uh, you know, Baker Concrete Construction. This works for uh, destination vacation places. This works for uh, online learning. Give away something for free to people. Uh, free trial, you can sign up for. How about a free demo? How about a free assessment? How about anything free that will get people to share some information? Those are all fantastic uh, ways to convert people in the middle of the funnel. Webinars, uh, special access you know, to groups. I'll show you an example of one of those, like a Facebook group or an, an online community of something. They're, again, they're just warming up. They want to get to know other people who are, in, who are like them, who need the same information. Email opt-in and list nurturing. Uh, you know, invite people, but don't just say, hey, join our newsletter. That never works. You have to give them an incentive to do it. And I'll have an example for that too. And then finally, remarketing. Um, this is, they've hit the site, they've left the site, and you've put a pixel, uh, um, a tracking pixel and a cookie in their browser, and then they're back off, you know, messing around on Instagram, and you can serve them ads and reminders, like this basketball organization. Okay, so then how do you measure the metrics on that side? So you're looking at visitor conversion rates for forms, like if you, all, all these, if they're forms, free trial, or download a PDF. Sometimes you make that gated content, sometimes you might not make it gated content for various reasons. Um, email opt-ins, downloads, you track all that stuff, right? That's what you're going to track. You're not, at the top, we're interested in raw traffic and where it's coming from. Here, you're interested in what is the stuff on my website doing? Is it working? If it's not, try something new. It may be your thing. It may not be the people, right? 
number of leads per activity. So, you know, are we getting them from the free demo or are we getting them from the webinar? We, you know, you need to measure these things as well so that you know where to put your time and energy. Number of leads per channel. Okay, are they coming from search? Are they coming from social? Are they coming from email? What is that from referrals websites? And then um, remarketing, you're going to measure impressions, click-through rates, and conversions again. So uh, again, your, uh, your impressions are, di are different. This is a remarketing audience. They've been to your website. Your click-through rates are, okay, they've seen the ad. The ad's working. They end up back on the website again, and how many of those converted again? Okay, so I want to give you some examples. This is a whole collage of, of examples of middle of the funnel. So an email opt-in on this side is, is right here, exclusive details. Stay up to date with the latest events and offerings at Monteverdi. Name, email, are you interested in arts, music, cuisine and food, spa, excursion, submit. That, that's fun. <laughs> that's not sign up for my newsletter. That's, you know, teach me about Italian food. That's wonderful. Uh, here's a forum, and these are all just little calls to action. Post questions, discuss, discuss the industry, browse pre-owned drone models, you know what this is all about, right? And network with other professional hobbyists. Join our free community forum. They're going to sell you a drone. They're going <laughs> to eventually, and they're going to do it through drone envy. Once you go out there and you're like, <laughs> oh, that drone's so much better than mine. I want to get that drone. <laughs> Um, which is where my 14-year-old is right now, in drone envy land. Um, let's talk about your future. Great, well, that's inviting. Let's find your style. That's even more inviting, right? Arrange an introductory conversation. Schedule a one-on-one -on -one discussion with our product development team. Awesome. How about a chance? All you need to do to win, enter to win $2,500 uh, is enter your email address. That's a lot more appealing than just opt into our email newsletter, right? Um, this is uh, can do. You get a potty training kit. We've downloaded tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, pre -po uh, free potty training kits on their website. This thing is uh, people all the time, every day, downloading these, and they're ending up in their email list, which is hundreds of thousands of people. Schedule a free consultation. Meet with a partner. Get a free course. Shouldn't your website be working for you? Get a digital assessment. That's us. <laughs> um, download the guide. Request a demo. Get started. Free forever. Make your school even safer. Free trial. And then uh, must-haves. Uh, spring is for planting. Here are 100 fa favorites for the garden. This is Natorf's, by the way. So you get the idea. This is all middle of the funnel. How do we get people, how do we give away something so that they can get exposure to what we do? And they're all different examples. They're furniture company and service firm, consumer products, um, manufacturing, you know, travel destination, hobbies, financial services, all different. And you don't need just one. Maybe there's multiple calls to action you can have in the middle of the funnel to try and convert people. Let me give you some remarketing examples, so ads that show up. This was a great one that popped up that I had signed up for like that from uh, Entree Leadership, Dave Ramsey's business program. Uh, I'd say uh, a webinar, it was great. I looked at it, I'm like, yep, I'm signing up for that. That'll be fun. And here's one, we were doing research for another company, so Blackbaud was, uh, I was on their website and they're just sending me uh, remarketing information. But this is nothing about converting and signing up with BlackBot. This is just teaching, giving away free content about you know, how to manage scholarship stuff. So it's, it's targeted towards it, higher learning institutions, and uh, it's a good example of just that broad scattergun approach trying to drive people into the middle of the funnel. So I uh, did a little shopping for my wife, and I got, grabbed this as an example. I was buying her a, uh, a summer dress, and as soon as I hit this website, boom, you know, oh my gosh, right in front of me, the email opt-in. This happens so often, right? It's totally annoying. If they would just be a little patient, uh, you know, I'm interested in 15% off, and as a matter of fact, I converted, and I bought the dress, and I took the 15% off. 
but I hadn't even seen anything, and they're hitting me with the 15% off. So um, a better way to do something like this is, well, let's go back to this basketball company that found me, right? So the next day after I went to their website and I checked out the dates and I watched some videos and I pretty much wished I could go to the camp myself, <laughs> they hit me with not the little corner ad, the big ad here, and they've got save over 15% on our early bird special. That's perfect. You know, I looked at it, I didn't convert yesterday, then they haunt me with the early bird special. It's perfect. And that's a little bit more of what maybe the woman's clothing store could have done. Uh, I did convert, so maybe they were smart enough to not do that to me. Um, but it, it was just right in your face. You know, they could have waited till page three or four, or dress three or four, and then it would have a little bit been a little bit more uh, subtle rather than the. It's like the the person when you enter the store. Hey, how can I help you? <laughs> can, what do you do? I, I uh, just leave me alone. <laughs> Okay, so we've arrived at the bottom of the funnel. Uh, your whole focus is a transaction. Purchase, repurchase, donation, new client, whatever the business is, we're here at the bottom of the funnel. We want to convert people. This might happen offline uh, with new clients signing up for other services. So we don't convert online. We have to meet people. We have to go through a uh, a discovery process and trying to figure out whether we can help this company and then the conversion happens later but we still measure that how did we meet them uh, when did we meet them was this a web lead was it a referral uh, all that all that so what do we, what's the activity at the bottom the activity gets a lot more direct down here okay clear CTAs buy now book now order today so it's not Free trial. Free trial might convert, right? But you can also bail out. That's, that's hooking them in. It's not download. It's not opt in. Those are middle of the funnel. Bottom of the funnel, we get serious. It's time to sell. You're always going to have these buttons, these calls to action on the website. But I'm telling you, the person just entering from the top is not going to convert. They're looking for other options to get smart on you and your business and your products without buy now, unless. They really want to buy a dress today for their wife, and they're just going to do it, uh, which worked. So what else can you do? Can you give a percent discount, 15%? It worked. It was great. Um, how about a limited time offer, sense of urgency? So <clears throat> I, we, we took a summer vacation with family, and every year my daughters go on. We upload all the pictures to Shutterfly, and they go on Shutterfly, and they produce a book. You know, you guys got these, the glossy ones. Send one to grandma, send them to the aunts and uncles. Uh, well, m my conversion, and I spent probably $250 on the weekend, was the fact that it was Labor, or, yeah, Labor Day only 50% off. So on Sunday, I bought $250 worth of those darn books for my family members, but it was 50% off. You know, I, I didn't do it. It had been sitting in there for a month. I was waiting for the sale, and I converted. The book was, hey, the book's been done for a month. We went in July. <laughs> so um, upsell, bonus offer, 30% more, buy one, get one free. Those are great. I know this is kind of product driven, but you have to think outside the box for services or healthcare or nonprofit as well. Uh, product bundles, family plans, these are, these are huge. You know, sign up for a Spotify family account and you get it on all these devices, all these people cell phone bundling plans for families, all of that stuff. Those are great examples. And it also, once you get people in with something like that, they tend to stay because it's too unwieldy to unpack all that. If you've got five cell phones from AT&T in your family, you're not gonna switch to Verizon, are you? It's too, too much cost, too much effort. Uh, product launch strategies, slowly warm people up towards uh, the transactional moment. There's Lots of books out there, lots of courses online on product launch formulas. They work. It depends on your, your, uh, your product and what you're, uh, what you're putting out there for people, but you can slowly build to here it's open, the sales on, the opportunity, don't miss out. And then uh, finally, email marketing. 
and remarketing work best in this middle part of the funnel for trying to nudge people uh, to take the next step. So how do you measure stuff at the bottom, right? Well, how about sales revenue? I mean, that's, here we are, we're talking about revenue converting dollars. Is that growing sales this week, sales this month, sales, you know, first six months compared to last year, how's that going? Uh, measure, measure, measure. Conversion rates by activity or promo, so which one of these, again, are converting and what are the dollar amounts? Number of new and repeat customers, again, are they, uh, re you got, we don't get into a lot of details here about retention and repeat customers, but that too is, is worth measuring and the number of new that are coming up, not just the dollar amounts, but the actual new customers as well. Average revenue per customer uh, transaction, awesome. You need to know that stuff. Like when you, uh, when you sell a new law firm client after the, uh, the course of one year, what's the average revenue? Do they spend $1,500? Do they spend $5,000 on legal services? On a, and then it, it tells you, well, do we need more people? Do we need less people spending a higher dollar amount? It, it begins to adjust your, your marketing strategy. Lifetime value of a customer. If they come to your law firm and you're doing their legal services for 25, 30 years, what's that look like? Uh, are they going to spend $50,000? Are they going to spend $100,000 with you? Are they going to spend $10,000? You know, try to understand those things. Okay, so how do you measure all this stuff? How do, what, what, is this to, what do the stats look like? How difficult is this? Well, I want to give you three examples. Any questions? Yes. Focusing on the metrics, um, I'm just curious on the first level at the top end of the funnel. Um, I mean, we were in a law firm, and that's why I'm picking on you. I know. Obviously, so I've got more in the room, so I'll, I'll take the iron. Um, but what we do is not intrinsically interesting, like boogie wipes. Right. right. So oh, it is if there's something going on in your life. <laughs> sure. my, my, my question is, what, what are some low-hanging things that we always, like here today, take a picture and tag you guys and say, hey, we had a great time at this U.S. Digital Partners event. You post it, you put it on Instagram and Facebook. You get, some, you get the same five or six people who like it, and then you, you don't really have any growth there. So right. I guess are there some things that you could suggest in terms of types of content, the way the content is deployed, social media platforms, where you can really attract people on that top part of the sales funnel. Because I kind of see it like social media, website, in person. Right. Um, so the, the difficult thing for us is getting more of a following on the top end of the, uh, of the spectrum. I feel like a lot of businesses do very, do very similar things. Right. I think for service firms um, like yours, you can go out there and you can be social and hey, I'm gonna tag somebody and all that kind of stuff. But what you really need to be doing is generating content. So, meaning writing about the stuff that people are going to face. It, it may be, you know, you pick a practice area. I, I don't know. You guys I don't know. Yeah, you, you guys make your people write blog posts. We do. Right. So, but the key, too, is not just the blog post is done. Oh, whew, that's how it's out there. No, that's when the work begins to say, well, actually, should I be writing this for this journal or this online organization? How do I get into some kind of influencer pools where it's, you know, uh, people commenting on something, putting it out there, that drives awareness, all of that. And then when you, when you have somebody come to you and say, oh, well, I've got this case, I've got, or I've, I've got this situation in my family business, or I'm being sued for this, you say, fantastic, that's awesome. We do that work. I also want to share with you these blog posts about that subject. So remember the US Digital Partners blocks up here. So somebody calls and says, hey, we got a problem. We got a letter for uh, our, somebody's going to sue us, threatening to sue us because our website is an ADA compliant. Great. This is what we do. This is what we help. Uh, let me send you my contact information. I want you to read this blog post about ADA compliance, and I want you to read this blog post about companies, what they've done who have been sued, uh, and, and how they've fixed their situation. So the generating of content constantly out there, subject matter expertise, 
giving it away for free, figuring out how to strategic, yes, it's going to be on your website, but how do I really get this published out there in different ways? And also, and also deploying in thinner slices, though, too, right? Because that, yeah. you're, you're describing the middle funnel to me a little bit, which is giving away the free content at a kind of a glut. If, if they're on your website, right. right. But right. if you can get it out there somewhere else, and you can, yeah, you don't write you know, a tome about how you know, this subject, but get something out there, light and coverage. I mean, how do these people get picked up in the Wall Street Journal commenting all the time, right? It's a, it's a PR effort, but you don't need to be there. You can be in, in lots of other websites uh, raising the awareness uh, for the firm and yourself. You. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. What are some good motivational tools when the folks in your business are disinclined to write blogs? <laughs> right, so. I would, say, I would ask the same question, but from a yeah, so get help. Get, don't wait for, people who don't write won't write. And what they do write won't be good. Get help. So find uh, writers, uh, find the people in the organization if they can write or if they can just sit down and you, you come up with an outline and then you hand it to a freelance writer to help package it all up and you review it. It's time consuming. This is the higher end of the tree. This is like, I gotta get, yeah, I need a ladder, and then I'm holding on to the fence, and there's that cherry. You, you gotta put in that kind of effort to, you know, get the, get the idea, the content ideas from the team, but you probably don't want them writing, probably right? Our, our, we're such a niche studio that we've had freelance writers come in and try to write about our stuff, and it's just gone horribly wrong. Yeah, yeah. So it can. Are people to write it, but they just don't. So what it's about like an interview? What, too, what about interview designing it for? That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about designing it for the person then? So is video better, or is uh, does? Oh or yeah. Does blog post yeah. Drive SEO strategy more. Right. Could you actually sit them in front of a camera and have them spout off about something, and and have that be good? Yeah. These are the kind of things you need to try for sure, and writers. Yeah, all not, not all writers are created equal, <laughs> and, and not all of them are going to gel with your content and understanding. That's where you, you need to try, no, that didn't work. Let me try this person. No, that didn't work. Let me try this person. Yep, that worked. Keep them happy. Pay them a good rate, and keep that relationship going. And once they know the organization a little bit, hopefully they can help pull out more of that story. But that's hard, right? You know, you... you there, there's, there's tons of writing freelance writer uh, organizations on the web, but I get emails every week from people, and you, you just get in the habit of test them, test them. Give them a little project, see what they get back, pay them 100 bucks, whatever. Test somebody else, test somebody else. And you know, it's, this is how you gotta try the freelance work world out there. Um, and getting to the right person, once you find them, keep them. Once you, you know. Lock them in. Good questions. So this is a lead generation example. There's a lot of numbers up here. I'm going to explain this. But this is, so how do I, when I have all these metrics, how do I begin to measure it? So this is an example spreadsheet that we would create at the highest level <coughs> that really rolls up everything we're doing for clients. So this is six months of data, right, through June. Uh, for this company where it's all about getting phone calls and forms and leads and, and, uh, and online chat. So up here, this is really the activity at the top of the funnel. We're talking about impressions, uh, you know, millions, hundreds of thousands from ads being served up, generate clicks. Okay, well, seasonality, different things going on, but, you know, not that huge of a click-through rate, right? We're talking less than 1% here. You, most people would despair and think, oh, that's not good. Well, hold on. Average click through, or cost per click, all right, 455, very low in January. Um, gets down around two, three dollar range. Total cost per month, 6,000 this month, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, 10,000, 9,000. The plan, meaning where's our budget that we're gonna spend in that range generates, and we measure phone calls over time, right? So um, 
for the first six months, form leads filled out, and chat started. So we brought on chat in March, and you can see how that ramps up. But these turned into leads, not just sessions, but actually, yeah, I'm interested, right? Um, and the cost per conversion, meaning all the money we spent here that converted into a lead, the, the, the cumulative uh, accumulation of these three categories, you're spending $180, $100, you know, $77, $100 per lead. That's a lot of money, right? For most people, right? And the conversion rate, 2%, less than 1%, 2%, 2%, 3.5%, huh? Well, but this company, believe it or not, is the average sale is over $50,000. Why would you spend that much money? Well, because that's the case. And they're killing it. They're absolutely killing it with new business and new business growth. So you can see they still have to close the day. This is something where they get the lead. They actually have to go out and estimate something and scope it out for people. And it's drawn out. And the sales cycle is about three months. But with over $50,000, they only need you know, one conversion a month. And they're getting you know, dozens of conversions a month. Um, the next one, so uh, online sales. So this is where they actually transact online. And you can see, you know, tons of impressions, tons of clicks. You end up with an online purchase right on this line right here. The purchase is going on. Again, some seasonality in this. March, February are real high. And the revenue. 34,000, 100,000, 100,000, 64,000, 28,000, 42,000. Cost per conversion, $27, all the way up to $50 here. Conversion rate. But look at the return on investment. So the return on investment calculation there, 140%, 356%, 435%, 277%. Even in the slow month of May, it's still 68% return on investment. So again, this is how you roll up that, those may, the, the bottom of the sales funnel, it's actually the convert, the actual sales, the top of the sales funnel will be the impressions and everything coming in. And then we don't have everything in here. The middle of the sales funnel would be like free giveaways, what they have, enter to win, all that stuff in the middle. And we don't, can't fit it on here, but that is part of the data as well. And then donations for a nonprofit online, again, we have, uh, tons of impressions, a fairly low click-through rate at 2% on average, but a cost is less than 50% on average. And we're doing Google ad grants, so Google, we're spending Google's money, and we're only spending a little bit of their money, about $1,300, $1,400, $1,500 um, a month for additional remarketing and prospect advertising. Uh, and you roll this all the way down, they've got donations, coming in, right? We've got phone calls coming in, which end up in being donations too, a good portion of them, right? And the cost per donation, you're measuring that, $30, $13, $18, and donation rate, it seems fairly low, right? And then there's the revenue, 6,000. So, you know, you're spending 2,000, you're making 6,000. You're spending 1,800, you're making 6,500. 2,200, 9,800. You get the idea. These are donations at the bottom. And then there's other channels that they make donations for as well. But this is a good dashboard and example of how it works for nonprofits. Okay, uh, bringing this towards an end. Uh, I thought I'd share this stat that, you know, leads, for those of you in service business or form leads or anything like that, you're nine times more likely to convert. Uh, if you follow up with somebody in the first five minutes and you're 30 plus, uh, or over 30 minutes, you're 21 times less likely to convert. So what does this mean? It means have somebody ready <laughs> to follow up with people, especially if you've got form leads, calling them right away. It's critically important customer service. And then finally, if you have a disconnect where the marketing team is generating leads, and they're ending up in a CRM system, and the sales team is not doing anything about it. You've got a big problem. This happened last week with one of our clients that they realized 
nobody's following up on this stuff in Salesforce. This happened a year ago with a large client that we're not, no longer working with because they took it all in-house. But for like three years of online advertising, they finally sat down with the sales team who admitted, yeah, about 80 to 90 percent on those we never follow up on. <laughs> Somebody should have jumped out the window. <laughs> I mean, it, it was that bad. And then they decided they were going to be better off taking it in-house and doing it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a mystery. So I realize this is daunting. Uh, where do I start? Here's our model again. Uh, quite honestly, you know, at the top of the funnel, at the bottom, if you are a new business, if you're a new product that's out there, you need to start at the top of the funnel because you need to just throw as much traffic and stuff into the funnel as you can. Consider your target uh, customer. So we, we work with clients to develop personas to really understand what's the kind of content you're going to generate that's going to be interesting to them. You know, if, if here comes, a, you know, a, a marketing molly, <laughs> whatever the persona is, you're, you need to identify that and say, what can we write? What can we generate for Molly in order to, um, is that, that's a local? It's just a Hamilton County wireless emergency alert system test. There's no action required. Awesome. <laughs> I always look out the window just like, is there a tornado? <laughs> Steve, are we good? Talk about an alarm. Okay, give me one more minute. Um, Pick a funnel activity. So the whole thing is daunting. Where can you focus? First decided, do I need to focus at the top, middle, bottom? Pick an activity and focus on that. Are you going to generate some content? Are you going to uh, create a new call to action on the website? And measure it, right? Um, create some helpful content. There I am, getting ahead of myself. Uh, make the funnel, um, the, the transactions, the transition, clear. So if you've got a blog post, don't just write a big old blog post and there's nothing there. Right in the middle of the blog post it would be, you know, want to talk about this or want to get a free download or something else. Don't just assume they want, oh, give them and let them go. Always invite them to the next level of the funnel. We see that all the time. People are cranking away, putting out blog posts, but is it clear to talk about your legal needs? How about a confidential free discussion? You want to talk about this? Um, Keep it simple, track the results uh, with your own dashboard, repeat, repeat, try it again, ask the question, should I change this? Well, let's try something new. Uh, hopefully this gives you some ideas. So here we are back at the uh, cherry tree again, and just remember, um, ask yourself if your company is just going to settle for the low-hanging fruit, or are you going to do the, the effort that it takes to really get to the people out on the uh, the outer branches who have never heard of your brand. Uh, and that's it. Any questions? Happy to. I think we're like two minutes over. <laughs> yes? Um, so our organization is inherently impatient. No. Um, and I, what I'm trying to reconcile is if I'm giving it away too early in the funnel cycle. So, um, is that the awareness is kind of a waste of effort, um, even though I see value in it. So pushing, you know, like free, uh, you know, download your PDF on how to best launder your commercial business. Right. So, and that, so I'm pushing a lot of the middle of the funnel activity up to the top just to create perceived value and to keep, um, you know, folks from, you know, like, well, when are you going to, when am I going to start to see, you know, push your, Right. You know, conversions and things like that. Uh, and so I'm just. Is this for online sales or lead generation? But my question is that is, is it okay to push some of that middle of the funnel activity up to. Oh, yeah. Or do you see, you know, a hard and fast? Yeah, if you're in that situation where you have to sell it, which is really quite often, uh, you have to sell the top of the funnel spend. Um, yes, by all means, focus on the middle of the funnel, get more and more things out there. But you, you, you got to measure so that those free giveaways or how did you hear about us, you, you've got some evidence that they are generating, they are turning into leads. They are turning into leads and there is a return on investment here. And then you gradually say, you know, well, we, we'd like to introduce remarketing. We'd like to haunt these people out there with pillow and sheet ads, you know, when they're 
well, we don't want to see those on social media. Yeah, you got to go show them on social media because that's where I'm screwing around on Facebook and I'm about to spend hundreds of dollars on basketball. I mean, these it's an impulse buy world, you know, I've got to have it suddenly. Uh, that's, that's where you want to be, and you introduce then something else. Well, actually, we want to do some display advertising, and here, here's the targeting we want to use, and we're going to measure it. And if, you, if you're working from a dashboard, and you've got that kind of stuff, and you're showing leadership, hey, these kinds of activities are generating these leads. If they're good business people, after a while, they're going to be like, how do I do more of that stuff? How, 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 where else can we get impressions? What else can we do? So, if that's the case, you have to work your way slowly up the funnel and you begin to do just little things out there and like give away, some kind of giveaway, like we'll furnish your bedroom or something, I'm making it up. Um, and you get lots of activity out there and all of a sudden, hey, we got 10,000 people who opted in to get free sheets <laughs> or something like that or free bed makeover or, or whatever it is. And then maybe it's a little bit more subtle is that helpful, Chris? Yeah. All right. I just want permission to give away to you. Go forth. Anybody else? Yes. Um, so my uh, nonprofit has been around for. Remind me the name. Cincinnati Concord Delegate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The car show. Yeah, for almost forty-five years. Um, so they're quite a tradition or institution. Yeah. In I guess mine is zooming back out and taking a look at traditional marketing versus digital and the percentage that you're seeing now. Because I think that's always a conversation that I'm having as I step into this role. Right. Um, is that battle of how much traditional, which everyone there, because they've been around so long. Which is what? Know. Print, TV, radio? radio? They're doing all, yeah. yeah. Well, is that... It, it, it can work. It does work. Like every, all, all of us, we drive down the highway and we think billboards don't work. They work. Yeah. But it's that top of the funnel activity, right? Uh, and radio works and TV works. It, it, they're still spending tons of money. This stuff still works. But this, this allows you to spend less and experiment and find new channels where that stuff is really, it's going to dwindle. It's going like this, but it still works. So. I think the more you, you try something and you measure and you see results of traffic to the website and you can, uh, like the radio side, um, <clears throat> the only way they measure, and this is a few clients that we're doing this with this year, where they'll buy ads and then they'll just look at Google Analytics and say, did we get a spike in traffic when the ad ran at 8.50 a.m.? Did it go up or down? That's the only thing they have to measure. It's really, that's really bad because that's not really working. Um, but in cer certain circumstances, it does work. But I think the more you could measure, like come up with some, um, some creative, and we can help with that, uh, ways of getting out there, social media, uh, getting, I mean, the target audience for car lovers, antique car lovers, the data we have now to get to those people on digital is killer. It's killer. You can come up with audiences who, you know, they're just, you couldn't figure that out before. You had to spend all the TV and radio. You can literally find out exactly who's interested in what stuff, serve them ads in a 50, 25 mile radius of the event. Um, then while they're there, you can geofence them and then you can spam them afterwards. <laughs> And then you can keep them in that audience for next year and you can build up. So maybe it's a multi-year approach to trying some stuff like that to see, you know, did we grow the traffic? Did we grow to awareness? Do we, and then maybe, um, you know, could you do some stuff while the show or the events are going on to ask people, survey, you know, how'd, how'd you find out about us? How did you hear about us? Did, and did they have, oh, it was radio, it was radio, it was radio. Or it was online, or it was social media. And there, so you're in this situation, right, which is good. You want that. You want referrals all the time. Um, but the whole, the whole world's going through this generational shift where, um, you know, the, the, 
the tradition is, oh, nobody will buy that. I can't buy that. No, nobody, nobody will buy my stuff through one of these, right? No, they, they might do some searching online, but they don't, they don't buy online. Well, in some industries, you know, boom, it's there. People want to buy a car like this. They want to buy their house like this. They don't want an agent. They don't want that. And we're about to see those radical shifts where people are, will say, oh, it's going to change the way you do business. And it ha it's changed a little. But now it's really changing. And people like financial services, you know, with stock traders or all this kind of stuff, um, you know, Microsoft, why would, why would you buy those licenses and all that kind of stuff? You just, I do Google Docs, it's out there, it's free, what's the difference? You know, all these, these dramatic shifts. So is that helpful? Good. Thank you, everyone. I'll let everybody go. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming. Uh -huh.